The goal of this video is to calculate the derivative of sine and cosine. We need some prerequisites. We need to know the angle addition formulas for sine and cosine. We need to know these special limits. And we need to know the definition of derivative. We'll start with a modest question. Let's just answer this question first. What is the slope of the line tangent to the graph of sine at x equals 0? So we want to know the slope of this line here. If the scale of this diagram is at all correct, it looks like the slope is right around 1. So let's make it official. What is f prime of 0 in this case? So we need to apply our definition of derivative with sine substituted for f. And we get this expression, which simplifies quite nicely because sine of 0 is 0. And this boils down to a limit we've seen before. It's the limit of sine h over h as h approaches 0, and that's 1. So indeed, this tangent slope at the origin is 1. Let's try to find the derivative of sine. And what this derivative function will do for us, it will give us the tangent slope as a function of the argument x. So we apply the definition of derivative, and in this case, instead of the argument 0, we apply it at an arbitrary argument x. In Leibniz notation, we'd have something that looks like this. So now we've got to do a lot of work to find this limit. First, let's apply the angle addition formula for sine to expand sine of x plus h. Next, we'll simply rearrange a couple of terms. And we're going to do a lot of algebra on this expression, so let's set it off to the side out of the limiting process for the moment. We will factor out this common sign from the first two terms. We will break this expression into the sum of two fractions. And when we apply the limit, we'll be looking as h goes to 0. x doesn't change through the limiting process. So x we can treat like a constant, and therefore sine x and cosine x we can treat as a constant. So to emphasize this, we're going to sort of pull these off to the sides of these two expressions. Now let's put this expression back into the limiting process. We were about here in that process, and so the derivative of sine x is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of this expression. Let's apply the limit law for sums to break this up into a sum. And then we can apply the scalar multiple laws to pull out the factors of sine x and cosine x. And now we apply our special limit knowledge. We know that this limit is 0 and this limit is 1. And when all the dust settles, we find that the derivative of sine x is just cosine x. So is this result plausible? Let's take a look at the graph of sine x. We already know the tangent slope at x equals 0 is 1. So we'll plot that point, and that the derivative function will have to go through that point on the graph. And we can tell that the tangent slope at pi over 2 should be about 0. And the tangent slope at pi we expect to be negative 1 by symmetry. And the tangent slope at 3 pi over 2 we would expect to be 0. And by the time we get to 2 pi, the periodicity of sine tells us that we should expect the tangent slope to be 1 again. Now, if we plot cosine being the putative derivative, and we'll notice that it hits these points, and it sure looks pretty good. It looks like cosine really is the derivative of sine. So an obvious next question is, what's the derivative of cosine? We could plunge right into the limit calculation, but let's see if we can guess what the derivative of cosine should be. Here's sine and its derivative cosine. We know that the tangent slopes of sine are encoded by the values of cosine. Now, the cosine function can be obtained by pulling the sine function to the left pi over 2 units. So we could imagine all the tangent slopes dragged to the left pi over 2 units. So whatever the derivative looks like for the cosine function, it should be obtained by pulling the corresponding points to the left pi over 2 units. But when we drag the cosine function pi over 2 units to the left, we get negative sine. So we expect the derivative of cosine to be negative sine. Let's go through the official calculation and see if we get that. We have the definition of derivative. 
we apply the angle addition law for cosine. We do quite a bit of algebra to rearrange it like so. And we will notice that once we pull out the factors of cosine x and sine x, we get this limit. And using our knowledge of special limits, we conclude that the derivative is negative sine x, just as expected. So these are two huge results that you should have committed to memory very quickly because you're going to need them all the time. Now we'll end this video by noticing something about the derivative of sine and cosine. This was the first result we found, and then we found that the derivative of cosine was negative sine. What's the derivative of negative sine x? Well, Negative sine x is negative 1 times sine x, so when we go to take the derivative, that multiple of negative 1 slides out, so it's really negative the derivative of sine, and therefore that derivative is negative cosine. So we'll include this little bit to the diagram, and now we can close the loop by asking what is the derivative of negative cosine? Same game, the negative 1 pulls out, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so negative negative sine is sine. So we get this wheel of derivatives. The derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. The derivative of negative sine is negative cosine. And the derivative of negative cosine is sine. If you run across a problem like this, you should understand how this wheel works. If you want to take 33 derivatives of sine, you should think to yourself that every fourth derivative puts you right back to where you started. 33 is 8 times 4 plus 1. So that really means we're going to take 8 full spins, and there's going to be one quarter turn left over. In other words, the 33rd derivative of sine is going to be just the same as the first derivative of sine, and that should give you cosine.